Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I got some Michael with me. Michael Explosion here. I think we need to workshop that one. What, I can't adopt your last name? I mean, you could if you wanted to. Okay. Um, let me turn the volume down. Whoa, what is this? It's kind of rocking. Yeah. It's pretty intense. Uncivil War. Yeah. Let me know, can you guys hear us over the sound? Or is it, like, way too loud? Oh, this has got words. I can't do words. All right, this calls for like the second most pop important thing that I listen to while streaming. Ah, oh, relaxing music from Nintendo 64 games. That should be good. Michael, I love your shirt. Oh, right. <laughs> Did you forget what you're doing for no, a I, I kind of forgot what we were doing for a second. And the way you said it was like, Michael, I love your shirt. I'm like, why are you saying that so sweet? I got him that for Christmas this year. With, um, it was, oh, the socks. Yes. So I got the shirt and it came with, uh, I got a pair of Tom Servo socks and a pair of, uh, Crow T Robot socks, which I loved. I think they're great. All right. This I can definitely turn down sound wise a little bit more. Can you guys hear us okay over the, the music? I don't remember. Yay! I only got into it because of him. He introduced me to it. I'd never seen it really prior to us getting together. And now I love it. I think it's wonderful. She was pretty lame before she met me, but you know, slow improvement over time. <laughs> anyway, y'all. I'm the cool one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all. We have a Universal Yums. Um, and I figured we'd keep up the trend of opening these on stream because it's been fun. And also this is June's box. Uh, we did this, we got this one a couple weeks ago. Um, I just, <sighs> last weekend, Karen and I filmed like maybe like a month and a half's worth of, vid of videos and just did not get to this at all. So, um, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's do it on stream, because those are fun, and I can just kind of export it that way. Uh, I want you to, it says that it comes from a land of many Harrys, including Potter, Prince, and the one, Styles, I assume? The one from that boy band? Um... Yeah, right? So this is from the UK. Can you open the box? Yes, I can open the box. I opened the box. Yay! That's an important Wait. first step. Hang on, step one. Okay, check. So it looks like... Whoa, United Kingdom rejects. These poor snacks didn't quite make it into the box. Would you have tried them? Okay, lemon and lime sherbet popcorn. I would have tried that. Flame grilled Aberdeen Angus crisps. Oh. Which would have been amazing. Yeah. And black curd hard candies with licorice filling. Ugh. Well, I don't think Michael would have liked those, and I don't particularly care for black curd. The info sheet is really cute. Like, they do a really nice job of it. And there's the games on the back. I would love to see another Germany box. That'd be fun. What are these? Oh my gosh. Okay. So here is... Let me, let me reposition real quick. Well, hold I will hold. Okay, Michael's going to hold the box while I move and sit on after, my foot. After my many years of watching right? The Price is Right, I know how to properly explain. <laughs> so, let's see. This is the following. It's the National Animal of Scotland. D, it's the unicorn. I know that one. Yeah. Wait, what? The National Animal of Scotland is the unicorn. 
because they're... I, I love Scotland. Scotland is great. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we start here. I'm sorry, the box... The, the little thing got a little weird. So I think the first thing, we're gonna start with these Mackies of Scotland. Honey, must, honey and mustard flavor potato chips. But not honey mustard. Nope, honey and mustard. You ready to have a snack? Well, that's what we're here for. Unless we're only here to just smell them and then throw them out. I mean, <laughs> de depending on the smell, depending maybe. Depending on the smell. Well, I mean, <laughs> we tried some stuff the other week that did not smell particularly good, but they tasted fine. So these are, okay, so these are extremely thick potato chips. Like, I don't know if you guys can actually, if that comes across on stream, but they're really thick. Ooh, hot mustard. <laughs> Ooh, the face of unsure. Hot mustard, not what I was expecting. They're not bad, but I don't really taste honey. It's just mustard. Yeah. It's just hot mustard. Hmm. Oh, yes. English mustard. I always forget that was a look. <laughs> Our unique gentle cooking method. I don't know what a gentle cooking you know method what? for potatoes. You know what a rule if they put slabs in the bat in the box? I fucking love slabs, and I wish that they came here. Did I tell you I went to the website, and it said they won't ship outside of the UK right now? Well, yeah, they can't ship out of the UK right now, basically. I know, I know. It dawned on me now that because we are afflicted with the coronavirus, Also, I would like you guys to see, I have sarsaparilla as a beverage right now. Yeah. Oh, wait, shoot, here's, um, you know what? We'll put this to good use. We'll put... Hey, boom, this box looks familiar. All right, so... Let's try these. No, don't try the doll eyes. All right, doll eyes. Ooh, yum. I give them a C minus. It's, it's like a fun root beer, basically. Okay, so slabs are these extremely thick English crisps that I got. I won like a promo package of them once a couple of years ago. And they're so good, but they just don't sell them here in the U.S. just yet. But they're like, they're literally like a slice of potato and they're, they're intended to be eaten like on stuff. Oh, hey, hey, Jelly. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you for noticing that. Sorry, I only noticed because <laughs> Des brought it up. <laughs> Thank you for that because that smelled funny. I didn't want to have it's to have that. It's a wig on. cap. All right. It doesn't mean anything to me. So this is the extended version of the box that you got. Um. Stop it. Stop it. Oh my god. No. Next we have, and I'm, not, I'm just gonna fl flip through here and find them. I don't care anymore. Meh. We have chili and lemon potato hoops. I like them when they don't make you think too hard. It's like, what is this product? Potato? Hoops. hoops. Chili and lemon flavor. All right. So, yeah, I'm in intrigued by these. Stinky. Smell the chili. I put it on my finger. Chili and lemon rather than chili and lime, huh? Yeah. Hmm. That's actually kind of sweet. That's not bad. There's barely any chili there yeah. at all. It smells a lot spicier than it actually tastes. Are you even getting. No. Oh, yeah, really, it is kind of like sweet chili. chili's showing up. A yeah, later. it's a, it's a little bit delayed. It is a little sweet chili tasting. I'm thinking. Hmm. All right, what we got next? Okay. Oh no. What is? Um. These are Kent crisps. 
oyster and vinegar flavored. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Yeah. All I smell is oyster. I mean, all I smell is vinegar. Those were also not in my box, but I was not a fan of most of the chips I got. They're like a decent kettle cooked chip, basically. I don't taste oyster on it at all. Beware the Welsh chips and the onion rings. This is becoming a theme. All three of these chips said it's a thing and a thing, and we really only, only taste like one, one of half things. of it. Yeah. These are actually not bad. They're fine. They're totally serviceable chips. I don't. All right. No. I, I don't mind that there was no oyster flavor. Yeah. There. I can live with it. These are the ones that you are warning us about. These are Welsh lamb and mint chips. Okay. And these were the ones that, uh, and the onion rings are all, oh no. All I smell is mint jelly. This is so weird. Weird. Not terrible though? No. I don't know if I would eat the whole damn thing, but it definitely kind of tastes like lamb with mint jelly on it. Pretty sure it's pretty yeah. This might be one of those situations where if you don't like mint at all, it is extremely overpowering. And also, yeah, if you don't like lamb, it's it's not gonna be. But it does t it does taste like a fucking lamb chop, and that's that's wild. That shit's wild. What else we got? What do you got next? We got poo. Who are you? Prawn cocktail. So you'll eat the oyster chips, but you won't eat shrimp cocktail flavored stuff. Shrimp is worse than oyster. <laughs> shrimp is worse than oyster. Lamb and mint jelly is one of my fav- it's like a really good flavor combination, in it's my opinion. It's Elise's favorite ice cream. <laughs> shrimp- yeah, I like shrimp better than oysters. This doesn't even smell like shrimp. Tastes like shrimp. These are good, though. I like these. I mean, if you guys have ever had, like, shrimp chips- from the Asian market. It tastes kind of like that. I want to eat another one. Mm. And they're like spiral, yeah. They look like rotini. That's what it is, they look like rotini. Oh God, ye old wine box, how hopeful you are. All right. Now, to just kind of continue with the, uh, the ones that you said were terrible, we have Johnny's Pickled Onion Rings, crying out with flavor. <laughs> Only 25 pence. I don't want my food crying out with anything. Oh. The bag is very much graphic design is my passion. I can These smell this this bad. These do not smell good. I'll help you. Out. You want to smell them? Yeah. Well, that's a pickle. Whoa! Holy shit. Yeah, what was their idea? Ah! Is this fucking Branston pickle flavor? Yeah. Whoa! I Whoa! I hate onion, and I would have welcomed more onion flavor. That. Whoa! Ew. Whoa! 
You know what that's for? It's for beer. So it's when I idea. I think that is technically Branston pickle flavored, which let me tell you how bad it was when I went to fucking Scotland and asked for pickle with my baked potato, assuming I was going to get a fucking pickle, and instead I got death relish. <coughs> oh god. It's malt vinegar marinated onions. Oh, Ugh. bad. All right, Michael, pick one next. I can't see it. Just grab something. Death relish, exactly. Bag of thing. Okay. Okay, this sounds a lot more pleasant. This is strawberry milkshake chewy bonbons. Ooh. Let me see if I can find. Strawberry milkshake chews. Oh, apparently this is an extra special Wimbledon treat. Whatever the fuck that means. I guess, oh, I I guess when the queen is watching Wimbledon, she goes, I suppose I will have my but strawberry milkshake bonbon. I forgot to switch to this. Hey, these are good. That is good. These are pretty good. I don't know if I'd eat them at Wimbledon, though. I would probably have yeah. something else. In 2019, spectators ate over 27 tons of strawberries and cream at Wimbledon. Okay, so it's actual strawberry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bag. Okay. okay, so now we'll do... These are... Also chewy bonbons, but they are rhubarb and custard flavored. I don't think I've ever eaten a rhubarb or rhubarb flavor. I've had rhubarb before, and it's not bad. It's like, but the texture of it sucks. Like, sweet celery. Oh, these are good. Now, obviously, I have very little to base it on because I can't tell you the last time I actually had... No. I can't tell you the last time I ever had rhubarb. Um, it was in 2000. So... It was a rainy day. Well, of course it was. We were in the UK. What do you expect? Um, but pretty, it's pretty good. I like both I like, I like both of those, yeah. I'm still chewing this one. Mm. Okay. Mmm. Sweet celery sounds like Super Elise's catchphrase. Alright, right now we've got Walker's Nunsuch Original Toffee. Whack, then unwrap and enjoy. Wow, this is a really loud Mario Tennis. There we go. Okay, so... But first we gotta work. You will lose your filling, don't do it. I whacked it. Oh my god. I did literally just get a temporary crown put on. Holy so I am, god! This might pull all your teeth out. I am going to defer to Michael on this one. Cause my teeth. And here we have a toffee brick. That's why we're supposed to whack it. Oh, there you... Just bite the corner. There's plastic Here, on it. I can't bite the corner. See? It's got like a molding. Jeez, it looks like toffee bullets. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little tiny piece right here, Michael. Okay. Slide them back into it. And all of can always stick it in the freezer and then whack it. Oh, that would have been smart. Michael would put it in the, the wine box. <laughs> it's like a peanut brittle brick. Oh, I wish it were peanut brittle. I love peanut brittle. Well. I'm chewing.
It's good. You're gonna be eating that one. It hugs your teeth and never wants to let go. Alright. So I will. Out of commission for the rest of the. Yep. I'll be over here chilling. Well, we've got more. I guess I'm gonna have to pass on this one right now. Hey, Lisette! We have. Yummy banana toffee. I think we're gonna pass on this one right now because you're still trying to decipher that toffee. My jaw's getting tired. Yeah. Plop. All right. Can we have something soft? Or How crunchy? about Grandma Wild's Odie? Odie. <laughs> Odie <laughs> cookies. Grandma Wild's Odie cookies. How's that? OT. Okay, you pronounced it OD. You know, like the dog from Garfield. <laughs> OT. O A T Y. O D I E. Banana toffee does sound super good, but I did just get a crown on my tooth, and I'm afraid. Yes. No. No. Bad idea. I think we do have the flapjack in here somewhere, Mel. Toffee flapjack? Odie cookie. OT cookie. Odie cookie. Odie cookie. That's a nice cookie. That's a nice pleasant cookie. They may have some on the um on the website, the store for the website. Or the the Universal Yum store, you may be able to buy more. Mm. That was a good cookie. It was just kind of like a very simple oatmeal cookie. Ah, yeah, that I understand. Cheese and onion. Um, what do you want to do? It looks like we got two. Ooh, let's do that. Clotted cream fudge, huh? Zero out of ten, not shaped like Odie from Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> A missed cross promotional opportunity. All right. So this is clotted cream fudge, which I have heard mm -hmm. really like good things caramel. about. Fudge was delightful. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, that is so soft. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That's a good one. These are good. Mmm. It's like a caramelly fudge. Mm. You just want to have like tea in a book with that. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Same with those Odie cookies. OT cookies. What else we got? We got. I think I'm going to pass on these right now. The cheese and onion crisps. Because I'm sure they're going to be fine, but all the other stuff we have left is sweet, and this is gonna throw a major wrench in the works. Unless you want to try and pie. There you go. I don't want to have eh. one. Put them in the box. We'll save them for later. It does have improved flavor. Oh, flavor with a U. Eh. No, I enjoyed the I cheese and onion. Was very careful about only having a few at a time. Yeah. I like this fruit and lemon all right. biscuits. All right, we got Grandma Wild back. From 1899, baked without compromise. Since 1899. <laughs> no, Grandma Wild, we have to compromise. <laughs> You're fired. We compromise on nothing. But Grandma Wild, it's World War II. No. No, we're still going. All right. So it looks like the fruit in question is a black currant. Why would they? So, a lemon is also a fruit. Why would they keep the other fruit a mystery? <laughs> Question mark and lemon. <laughs> but Grandma's literally the middle of the blitz. No! We must keep going. Mm. These are good. Yeah. Grandma Wild's got some good shit. Mm. Now I'm thinking. No, that's gonna get me canceled on Twitch. <laughs> I didn't create it. 
<laughs> oh man. Toffee flapjack. This sounds good. Alright. Now this one. This one you said was awesome, right? Welcome. Uh, guys, I'm gonna promo you right now, actually. If you are interested in cool, like, volcano geology science sort of things, check out Volcano Doc's channel. Uh, they do, like, Science Sundays, right? Did I get that right? Is it Science Sunday or is it Science Saturday? I can't remember. But I've been, like, going back and watching your VODs, and they're really fun, so check it out. Oh, heck, this is good. Mmm. Yeah, nice. Last one. Mm, it's a yeah. shrimp. Well, there's also oh, the mystery bag of mystery things. We're doing okay out here. I hope you guys are doing well, too. Um. Sorry, so this is Dean's shortbread. Oh, can we have a cookie? Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, hang on. I'm still recovering from that. Flapjack, that was really tasty. Mmm. I mean, this is just a shortbread. There's nothing to it. Is it? Yeah. Mmm. Yeah, it's okay. Actually, kind of a boring shortbread. And now in the yum bag. Hang on, let me get out my scissors. I got it. Volcano Science Sunday tomorrow. Recording an ET impact lecture tomorrow and answer volcano question. No, it's not a bunch of my ground. So this is a um they do um it's a subscription service called Universal Yums. And once a month they send a box with a bunch of snacks from what it's usually one particular different country. Uh, this is from the UK, so they're including stuff from Scotland, from England, from Wales, and Northern Ireland, too. Canada. Uh, technicality. <laughs> um, yeah, I like I like shortbread, typically, but that, I think, after having the flapjack, which is such a strong, rich flavor, that's kind of, like, bland in comparison. So usually I just do these on YouTube, but... Since I've been so behind with, like, literally everything, I've been opening the Universal Yums on Twitch. And recruiting my husband for it, too. Um, so these are Bristow's Bucks Fizz Chews. These are Fizzy Orange and Champagne Chews. Whoa, I like the idea of fizzy. Yeah, I like the idea of orange. Mmm. Whoa. That actually is pretty good. It's just kind of like orange and cream. I don't really taste... Champagne? Maybe it's supposed to taste like a mimosa? Maybe a little bit. Apparently, the Bucks Fizz was invented four years before the mimosa in Paris. Hmm. Alright, we've also got... Mm. Sherbet lemons, which literally just look like fizzy lemon, lemon hard candy. candies. <laughs> Pass on those for now. Boring. What is this? This is pure confectionery, it says. That's not helpful. <laughs> this is a chocolate lime. I'll try this one. Michael, you want treacle toffee? So the flapjack was, uh, that was from our good friend, uh, Grandma Wild. That was Grandma Wild's Toffee Flapjack. I'm afraid of this chocolate lime. That's weird. Oh, that's real weird. Not bad weird, but like. The outside is just like a lime hard candy. 
And then the inside is literally just like chocolate. Weird. Hmm. So, savory was kind of a dud. Sweet was pretty good, though. Sweet was good. Yeah. All right, let me check. I'm going to check the store and see what's available. Universalyums.com slash shop. Ooh. The flapjacks are available. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Those are the flapjacks, and I think those might be the best thing we had. Uh, is this Zelda music? This is... Yes. Uh. This is the uh, Majora's Mask title theme. I found a... Uh, it was a, a YouTube video of relaxing music from N64 games, so I just kind of put it on in the background. So, we have a quiz... How well do you know UK hits? Uh -oh. And the first one, David Bowie, Heroes. We can be heroes just for one time? Day. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Tom Jones, it's not unusual. <laughs> it's not unusual to be Love. drowned by anyone. Uh, Love? Led Zeppelin, Immigrant Song. We come from the land of the ice and snow... From the midnight sun, where the heart, the hot springs blow. No, that doesn't sound right. Hot springs spring, maybe? Okay, one last try. Elton John, Tiny Dancer. Hold me closer, Tiny Dancer. Count the blank on the highway. Headlights! Roadkill was the correct answer. Sorry. We were looking for roadkill. So, yeah. Um, oh, so let's see. Oh, wait, never mind. I figured out where we're going. So this month, the July box is going to be uh, Thailand, I believe. Land of ties. <laughs> Do you want to know where we're going next? Yes, follow us on Instagram or Facebook or both. In a week or two, we'll post a tricky clue about next month's country. No. Fine, we won't tell you, but we will tell you one more thing about the UK. Did you know that the Legend of Loch Ness Monster goes back all the way to the year 565? Spooky. <laughs> oh, the hazelnut meringues are almost all gone. But yeah, so I like the yum shot, the the fact that they put like the extras up on the website because sometimes I just want more. And so it looks like they have the um Excuse you, I want United Kingdom. So we have clotted the fudge, the clotted cream fudge is available, the rhubarb and custard candies. The flapjacks, the Scottish shortbread, the banana toffee, all of the potato chips, which I don't think I would recommend those, the Bucks Fizz candy, which I would recommend, and the sherbet lemons. Bucks Fizz candy, single pack, thirty-eight seventy. Well, you get 300 pieces per pack. That's a lot of fizz candy. That is an awful lot of fizz candy. Puppy time, we need to get some of those flapjacks. Yay! <coughs> Alright, right, so, y'all. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that I won the Universal Yums Challenge, so I will uh, exit on that note. And uh, everyone have a good night. Want to take the chair with you, Pi? Why? Because it's going to be weird in case I need to move. Well, where's ice cream going to sit? Ice cream will sit on my lap if he wants to. Alright, bye bye. Thank you. Oh no, my drink is there. Oh, well, here, I'll grab that for you. That's what you got pockets for. Yeah, Alright. Well, that sounds like a you problem. I'll get you next time. <laughs> so I'm still here for a little bit at least. Um.
not for too, probably too terribly long because I, as I told Boom before, I feel like I've gone through a tumble dryer. Let me just full screen webcam again real quick. Um, I had a rough day. Rough day. Uh, I got my new car checked out and that took extremely much longer than I was expecting. Um, and then I got home and I ate food and I fell asleep on the sofa for two hours, which that's always great. Um, what is, what is this one? I know I know this one. Oh, Paper Mario, welcome to Yoshi's Village. No wonder I recognize that one. Okay. Um, so I'm going to corner mode it. And I think, I think I'm just going to do some Bejeweled tonight. I don't think I'm going to do more Pokemon tonight because as we recall last time I had an extreme amount of trouble just understanding what the fuck I was doing because I stopped looking at the game for eight months, nine months. Uh, so let me shut this Nintendo music up. And we got, we got some good old Bejeweling. Oh, how do I change the stupid title now? I forget how to do that. Um, I guess I have to go to Twitch proper and do that. Give me a Sekiruni. God, Sekiruni, who the fuck am I? Ned Flanders? There we go, okay. Wow, that took 45 minutes? Oh, damn. I think my husband crop dusted me. Thanks, Michael. If you want me to send you a fishing training tonight, if you're not feeling like a mom to qualify today sometime tomorrow, does that work? I think that might be better for me, honestly. Because I am just, I am, basically, I'm gonna quit stream and I am going to go to bed. Um, but I do want to play some Bejeweled because I need to just kind of do the chilling of the out. I would appreciate if if that's cool with you, then I would love to. Oh, I would love to do it tomorrow because tomorrow I'm. We were originally gonna maybe go somewhere, but I don't really want to. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling after this. You get some puppy time in, and I will. Cause we are. Oh, you gonna call into work tomorrow? Ugh. I was originally, we were maybe going to go up to Mitsua, but I don't know if I want to go up there this weekend. I might wait until next weekend and do that. This is pretty good sarsaparilla. After a hard, it's, okay, so it's like Wyatt Earp on the label. After a hard day of gunfighting, there's nothing beats a real sarsaparilla. I, we haven't been to Mitsuwa since before the pandemic started, and I consider it a safe place to go because it is a grocery store. Okay, so Mitsuwa is a chain of Asian, or Japanese grocery stores, but not like a big chain. There's like one in Chicago, a couple in like SoCal, and one weirdly in Northern New Jersey. And it's the coolest place. <laughs> um, they have like a food court and a bookstore and a bunch of other stuff there. And I just, I really like it, but it's a long drive to get up there. I might just want to stick around at home tomorrow. <coughs> the food is really, really good. Like their prepared food is awesome. Oh, okay, so that's definitely going to be one of those places when, like, the world is not completely bananas that we should definitely check out looking into. I'm trying to remember where they are, and I'm going to check it. Mitsu. Mitsua locations. All right, so there's one. There's a bunch in California. There's one Tor um, Torrance del Amo, Irvine, Costa Mesa, San Gabriel, Santa Monica, San Diego, San Jose, and then there's one in Chicago, 
the one up in New Jersey, one in Plano, Texas, and one in Hawaii. When we do our road trip, can we go there? Yes, of course. But I absolutely recommend if you guys ever have an opportunity to go there, uh, definitely go there. It's a really, it's a cool place that has a very cool variety of foods. Yeah, here, I will, um, I'm going to drop the link in the chat so that you guys can check it out and, and see which ones are closest to you. Um, go where I went to go grab some hot fries. Hot, ooh, hot fries. Um, but I, I like it because it's just kind of like this fun cultural experience. Because it's the kind of store that I walk in and very clearly I can't speak Japanese. I attempted to do uh, the, I was gonna say Hello Fresh. No, um, I attempted to do the the, fit, the, the, the the owl that yells at you when it comes to language, Duolingo. I attempted to Duolingo Japanese once and I couldn't do it. It was not working for me. Um, but yeah, so long story short, I don't speak Japanese, but I go in there with an open mind because there's just so much stuff. And it's the kind of thing I will always go and I will buy one thing that I have no idea what it is and try it. Because there's like, obviously there's a lot of stuff that I recognize. Like, okay, there's there's Pocky and, and other things like that. But sometimes you just want to try something weird. And it's not weird for a lot of people. It's just weird for us. So, the yeah, outfit yells at you, I mean, you aren't wrong. It's, it's true. But yeah, I, it's just, I tried it. My experience with Duolingo is as such. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I will attempt to learn Japanese via Duolingo. And then I stopped because I had a very difficult time processing three separate alphabets. Well, you know, whatever, the katakana and the hiragana and the kanji. And then I was like, oh, I speak German. I will go back to do that. And then it was extremely easy and I just stopped because I knew I'm like, oh, okay, I know all this stuff already. Carry on. So I think I have just resorted to self that I'm not gonna start learning any languages at the fun age of 33. That's, yeah, that's what I feel like if you already have a general understanding of how the language works, it probably works pretty good. But like for me, trying to learn something completely new, just that was not happening. Um, but the one thing that I really, really want from Mitsua, and I got it there once and I haven't been able to see it since there. And one time Lisette went up there and looked for it for me and she couldn't find it. They had um, age, or Kara Age chicken, which is just kind of like crispy fried chicken, but it was frozen. So we got it and we made like a kind of a stir fry with it. And it was so good. But they didn't have it the next time. And that was a bummer because it was really tasty. So my, uh, my favorite thing that I get from the food court uh, it's at Tokyo Hanten. Is it, there's, so there's a bunch of little restaurants in the food court. And one of them has excellent, like, fried chicken balls. And it comes with, like, fried chicken balls and rice and a bunch of, um, what are those called? Uh, come on, brain here. Not pot stickers. Gyoza. It came with a bunch of gyoza and they were so good. I just, I look forward to it every time we go. There were a couple times where I was up in that area for work and we were, it was funny because we were doing, um, we were doing a GPR mark out of a gas station that, this is a fun, the bedrock was so shallow we could actually see it through the asphalt paving. Which is, I've never seen that anywhere else. I'm like, wow, okay, I did not expect to see bedrock this close to the surface. Um, but we're up there, and they didn't expect me to go back to work after the 
project was done, so I'm like, I am five minutes away from Mitsua. I'm gonna go there. Uh, additional fun fact that uh, Mitsua is about ten minutes away from the location where uh, Aaron Burr shot Alexander Hamilton. And there's like a little park on the side over there. You can go check that out. Um, yeah, it was like I have it's right by Manhattan. So obviously, I mean, it's it's one of those like geology things that people know is that like Manhattan bedrock is super shallow and super thick. Um but like I really was not expecting to see a patch of bedrock sticking up into like the paved surface of this gas station. How they got monitoring wells in there? I don't know. It was probably air rotary, but it was not something I expected to see at a gas station in northern New Jersey. Oh yeah, Ez, it is this, it's just this tiny little park and you can pull over and there's a rock with a plaque on it that says, this is where they shot him. And we drove past it the one time and I'm like, this was before Hamilton was a thing whatsoever. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's like that Got Milk commercial with the guy has a mouthful of peanut butter and he can't say Aaron Burr just oh boo and that's when I date myself I love those like got milk ads surely somebody knows what I'm talking about if Karen were here she'd know what I was talking about it's just it's a neat little place and it's it's also it's right on the the waterfront so you can look across and there's New York City so it's it's just kind of a fun little place there was one what at that gas station that I was talking about you could look across and it was to where the um, the sea air and space museum the the um, the intrepid and that was right when the intrepid got the space shuttle so you look across, and there's a freaking space shuttle before they got, like, the building completed and everything was covered. It was great. I very much appreciated that. Because the, the guy who did our GPR markouts, um, I used to call him Uncle Bob because he had the same last name as me, but we weren't related whatsoever. Um... But he always was prepared for the weirdest stuff. And he goes, oh, go get the binoculars out of my truck. We'll go take a look at that. And we're like, that's a fucking space shuttle. I wonder, because when, when they, when it was decommissioned and they brought it up here, it was like piggybacked on the back of a, a fighter jet or something. And I missed that flyover entirely. But just look across the river and there's a god dang space shuttle. I'd like to actually see that museum again someday. I went once when I was a little, little kid um, and it didn't have the space shuttle yet, but I love space stuff, obviously, is a very fun thing. And I just like to learn about it. And I wanna go see the damn space shuttle. But obviously we're not going anywhere near New York City right now. Um, yeah, that's good. <sighs> oh, Bejeweled Zen Mode. You're the best. Like, I know we've talked about it a few times on the stream, but I just, I love how calming this fucking game is and just like if I'm in a bad mood this will get me right out of it I am still tired though so oh but I could have made a much better move there but alas I did not But how everybody else been doing? I've been talking needlessly about myself for the past 
53 minutes. I hope you guys are hanging in there as best as possible. It's been a long week around these parts, so... Yes! Hypercube, baby. Blue. Yeah. Okay. There we go. We're getting places. Oof. Yeah. How's everything coming along? So many explosions. Yay! Oh, the Ghiblies. It's so weird. Sometimes when I stream, I'm like, oh no, I can't say a, a single bad word ever. And then half the time, I'm just like, fuck, shit! It's been either 9 11 or 10 15. Oh my gosh, that's. That is so soon! I, I will cross my everything and hope that it goes well. You can, I am so pulling for you. This is awesome. That's, uh, I keep being uncertain if I want to go back for my PhD or not. Like, I think on one hand, I think I want to, but on the other hand, I don't know if I can pinpoint anything that I would want to continue studying that much. And on top of that, I've been out of academia for over a decade at this point. God. Oh, I'm fucking old. Oh, Christ. <laughs> but it's just... I kind of... I Like, I don't hate consulting, but it just feels like you get stuck. And I don't know if academia would make that better or worse. Cause like, I've been, I've been, I've been working in the field since like 2012. Yeah, it was like 2012 when I started. Graduated in 2011 with the master's and then really vet your advisor. Yeah, that's, and I think the problem that I had with that is like when I went to grad school, I went straight from undergrad. Like my, my undergrad advisor personally invited me to continue my education at the institution. So it was basically just picked up right where I left off. But now I'm just like, I don't even know. Cause like, I, I love doing the, the petrology. Like petrology was always what I preferred working with. But, and then <laughs> I was on a site the other week and there was some like granitic nice. And I'm like, oh my God, it's what I did my master's thesis on. And my boss was there and he's like, oh, that's nice. I'm like, all oh, right, I don't get to do like any actual geology anymore. You guys are all baby, but that's why I love you. <laughs> I'm just old. <laughs> High school was 2004, undergrad was 2008, and then grad school was 2011 because I took an extra year. Graduate high school in 2019. Baby! You're a baby! <laughs> That's always my reaction. Out of love, truly. And that's one of the cool things I think about the internet is that, like, I've gotten to know you guys, but not, like, in a creepy way. <laughs> like, obviously, there's a real fine line on occasion of, like, what's creepy and what's not, but at the same time, it's just like, hey, cool. I, I get your perspective on things, which is stuff that I might not always see. 
Um, yeah, I think between us, I think it's only like a six year difference. Um, but like, okay, the, the kid that I basically babysit to play Pokemon Go is in our Discord server. <laughs> because he's like 14, 15 at this point. He just won sophomore class president in his high school. I'm so proud of him. But he's just like my cool nephew who's like going places and I'm a scrub. <laughs> I'm a scrub that plays video games on the internet. Evan is definitely a baby, but he's he's like such a good baby. He knows his shit. He wants to be a lawyer. Who the fuck wants to be a lawyer at age 14? Like people with determination, that's who. I, at age 14, wanted to be an underwater saxophone player and we all know how well that panned out for me. Still working on that one, guys. Still working on that one. I had, like, no fucking idea what I wanted to be. Like, I I do remember from a, a pretty young age saying that I wanted to be a geologist, which in turn did pan out in some respects. Like, obviously that's what I have my degree in, so I guess on a technicality I'm a geologist. Um, I don't always feel like it because it's not... Basically, I only get to flex my geology skills at this point in time when my best friend calls me and says your nephew wants to know what kind of rock this is that he picked up off the side of the road and i'm really really good at rock id you guys i am exceptionally good at rock id so he thinks that's great and if my nephew asher thinks i'm cool then i've got to be at some point right My niece Audrey keeps sending me gifts in uh, Animal Crossing and it's hilarious. She sent me, um, what did she send me the other day? She sent me like a cowboy shirt. It was so cute. But yeah, it's, oh my gosh, my nephew is the cutest. He has like an entire bucket of rocks that he just goes around and picks up. And so what I did when, when I was in school, we used to go on so many field trips and I would just pick up samples of stuff that I didn't really have much need for, but were cool. Like we went to the garnet mines. So I got a bunch of garnets and we went to the fluorescent mineral place and I got a bunch of fluorescent minerals, but it's not stuff that I like, they're not like display worthy pieces. So it's not stuff that I really had any super attachment to. So I had this giant bag of rocks that I gave to my niece and nephew and minerals. There were, there were regular minerals in there as well. Especially like the garnets, the, the 12 sided garnets. Oh, those are really cool. And they lost their minds. And I'm like, if I can share, if I can share some of my love of the sciences with a kid, then I'm, then I'm doing something right. It's, it's just as good. I like, I like to, sh I do, I do vaguely miss teaching. I will say that. I'm, I am shocked by that statement, but like when I was, when I was an adjunct, I loved that shit. Oh my God. I loved surprising the students because I would just kind of be like sitting in the back of the class waiting for everybody to show up. And then they wouldn't realize that I was a student because, or that I wasn't a student because what professor has like <laughs> neon pink hair and says fuck a lot? This one, this one does. But that was like, I really enjoyed that, but it was extremely not sustainable. Oh my God. Like, I think I got paid. The pay on that was a nightmare. It was just so bad because I taught like one and a third credit hours because it was only a partial adjunct position. And I think I only ended up making like maybe $3,000 for a semester, which, wow, that was not sustainable at all. The greatest teachers have neon pink hair and say fuck a lot. I did the other day, 
Oh my God. It was, so I was, basically I was contracted to only teach the laboratory portions of classes because they, they, they liked me, but I wasn't full time enough to do the entire course. So I only taught the lab section, which they considered to be a third of a four credit class. So it was like one and a third credits and they barely paid shit. Um, I want to say it was like $1,500 per credit hour. And the, the place I was teaching at was an hour away from where I was living. I had to commute up there once a week, twice a week actually. Cause I had like one, I had a Tuesday class and a Thursday class. And it was just completely unsustainable. And they, tr I don't blame my, my faculty. Like they fucking tried to get me any position whatsoever. And that's what they could, they could swing for me, which I'm like, all right, this works. But it just was not something that I could keep up in the long run. Yeah, it was. It was not easy. Cause it was, it was, this was, this would have been like 2011 into 2012. And just, they were scraping so hard to try to find anything because finding a job in that market was an absolute nightmare. I graduated in May of 2011 and I didn't start full-time work until September of 2012. And just, just the literal finding of anything, especially in this fucking, this field was disastrous. Oh my God. And it's still not great. Hey Yoda, hey Cheesy, how you guys doing tonight? Um, like I said, it's still not great, but it's a little better having found like, like right now I'm working with a, uh, like a, I don't want to call it like a headhunter, but like a, a recruitment agency kind of thing that specializes in environmental placements, which has been extremely helpful for us. Oh no, what's that? This shit's fucking everybody up. And like, I... <sighs> CAPITALISM! Yeah, it, I think for, for something like what I do, it makes sense because they have, they have relationships with like larger firms. So they understand placements better and who, who goes where. And I'm really, really hoping that my company decides to take me on full time. Um, there's four more locations now. There's only six left. Oh shit! I am keeping my fingers crossed. <sighs> Winning a car dealership. Oh god. Oh, deals for a monastery. That's right. You were telling us about the uh, the monastery position. That actually sounds kind of cool. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Yeah, it's it's not fun, and I have been in that position a lot. It's just it's not shit's not fun. It's it's taxing. It's anxiety inducing, and you just. You just want people to take a fucking chance and they won't. Job and running semester ends because hey, student. So I was able to defer my loan for a bit when I wasn't working, so that is an option possibly. But again, also I my story is atypical because I was able to pay off my student loans because I was on a game show doesn't happen to most people. Um, like, my God, am I glad that I had that option because 
if I were still paying off my loans right now with all the other dumb shit I need to pay off, I'd be extremely fucked. Um... But it, it's just been... For me, working with the recruitment agency has been... It takes a lot of the fucking guesswork out. Like, they have positions for you, or they don't have positions. Working my ass off to keep scholarships rolling constantly. The amount I keep, the amount of parents safe for you. <sighs> I will continue to keep my fingers crossed for you. Because that is... That saved my ass when I went to grad school because I I told them, I'm like, listen, I can't afford this. And they're like, oh, it's okay. We'll pay for it. Not my not my parents, the school. Uh, that is that is my my minuscule advice. If if you can don't go to grad school unless you can get the school to pay for it. Um <sighs> But yeah, I'm I'm really, really hoping that the company I'm working with right now decides to take me on full time because I like them. It's a it's a surprisingly decent company. It's medium sized. Like there's it's I think there's maybe like 30 people in the entire company. Um Especially if you're going to school for the sciences. If they don't pay for you to get your degree, don't go. Like I have I have friends who have hundreds and thousands of dollars of undergraduate loans because they took out private loans. No, 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 no. That, we don't, homie don't play that. But like, yeah, the, so the company I've been working for, I really like, but they're obviously because of the COVID stuff, it has been, we have like no confirmation of whether or not they're able to take me on full time or anything like that. So I'm just, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping and hoping and hoping that they're like, oh yeah, we'll keep you at least, don't worry. Oh, I'm out of sassy Barilli. Man, that's tasty. Most of your programs include my undergraduate, specifically make sure to take care of you when you get into programs with your desk. Well, I went to the school and for it more than- Hell yeah, man! That's- That's lucky. That's awesome. It's like, when you find stuff like that and you can roll with it, absolutely roll with it. When we graduating high school, my friends had, like, so many schools because that was normal. I had three! I applied to three schools and only really wanted to go to one of them. Um... And I went to- I got into all three- like, okay, I guess this is humble bragging and I apologize. I got into all the colleges I applied to. But again, I only applied to three, and they were definitely all probably safety schools. Um, but I knew that I couldn't afford anything else! To my guidance counselor, they asked for a list. I gave them two schools, a public school and a school I got into. They looked at me like, you sure? Yes, I'm sure, goddammit! I must apply to 20 colleges and I went to my state school, my safety. But cheesy, it's actually not a bad school. I that was one of the ones. Ugh, yeah. Fuck. I like I said, the only reason I'm not still paying everything off from undergrad is because I fucking went on a game show. Which, hi, if you guys can pull that off, highly recommend. Go for millionaire. Oh, you went on like all the school visits, cheesy. Oof. At least the school that you ended up going to, like, I can, as much as I didn't want to go there, I can begrudgingly admit that it's a good school, so, yeah. Also, I just wanted you guys to see what I have literally sitting next to <laughs> my fucking desk right now. Soil classification system. Uh, where's my fucking full screen? Mate, there we go. I hate soil! Why? Why did I end up going into a field that makes me do soil more than anything? It is my least favorite. Ugh. Let me look at some fucking hard rock geochem. 
I missed that. I'll even do the chemistry part of the geochem that I always pawned off on other people. Where is... Where is move? There is move. Oh, well, my school have like zero school pride. Because... Yeah, basically that's... Yeah, it's because I got a job. Ugh. It's so, it's funny because when I took, when I took soil sciences in my undergrad, I hated it. And my professor hated me. She was terrible. We did not get along, like to the point where I had to have a wisdom tooth removed. Like I had scheduled surgery and was ready for this. And then like, she schedules a field trip over my damn wisdom tooth removal. And I can't go on because I'm literally getting a tooth removed. Purina is hiring for a kitty finger geochemist. MS or PhD required. Huh. And then she docked me like a full letter grade and a half because I couldn't go on the field trip to dig soil in the middle of the fucking woods somewhere. Like, thanks for that. The other problem that I have right now is that I am extremely location limited. Like, I can't really move, which sucks. Um, because I have family ties that I need to stick around here for. Uh... Because everyone's like, oh man, West Coast, that's where all the cool geology is. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Though I will say that most of the people I know in the geosciences that I didn't specifically go to school with are West Coast. Or at least West Coast based. Like, I, I don't even remember. I met this one guy forever ago, and he's a really chill dude, and I think he teaches at, like... Uh, where does he teach? Like, USCD? Hang on, let me find it. Uh, I don't even know anymore. Don't matter. But he teaches at one of, like, the, the state schools out west. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Two best friends have been misfortune for having to move during the pandemic. Yeah. One of the guys that comes around here every so often, um, that guy Anthony, I, I don't know if you guys remember him or not, but he's like a, he's a local pal of mine. He ended up having to move right in the middle of everything. And I felt so, and then Rom, like Rom's another, he's a pal that comes around here. Um, he literally moved from Iowa to California in the middle of everything. And I'm like, Jesus, that's a bold move but it ended up being a really good move for him. So thankfully he's, they were okay. All right, I think what's gonna happen, I'm gonna wrap up this particular level and then I'm gonna call it a night because I am, I am baby and I am tired. <laughs> I've been up since like six o'clock this morning because I had to bring my car into the shop this morning and they said it was gonna be done in half an hour and then it ended up taking four and a half hours. Probably was going to be stuck here now to work instead in job instead of moving with his girlfriend and the lease on the place his girlfriend was has is going to expire in February so she'll be stuck after that. Oof. That's fucking rough. See, that's one of the pro the other problem that I'm facing right now is like our lease is up in October, but we have to let them know by August if we're taking it for another year. And like, if they take me on full time at my job, we need to move up north. Well, up north. It's like an hour away. But they can't give me any like confirmation that that's what's going to be happening. And I'm like, I don't want to tell my apartment complex to go suck eggs if I don't have to because my rent is pretty decent out here. All things considered. And help her in New York and she's in North Dakota. Ooh! That's a very big difference. Where is move? Where is move? Hello, move. 
Hint me. Oh. Duh. Oh man, we've been watching a bunch of like old Simpsons episodes. And oh, what was the one we watched last night? It was Oh, it was the one where Homer uh the, where uh, Mr. Burns sends Smithers on vacation and Homer fills in his assistant and he becomes like self-sufficient. I forgot how good that episode was. Cuz it doesn't have any of those like real good like catchphrase moments, but it's still a really good episode. Disney Plus has been worth it, if not just for the first 11 se series of The Simpsons alone. Seasons of The Simpsons, I guess. We're not in the UK. Oh, and then Michael was watching some show about uh, what places would look like if the oceans were dried up, or if, like what's like at the bottom of the ocean and stuff like that. And there was one about New York and all like the shipwrecks and stuff down there. I'm like, oh, that's pretty neat, actually. But... Yeah. Alright. Where am I going? Where am I going? Okay. Bam. Bam. Yes! Yes! Good move. Ooh. I always find solutions that work. I don't. <sighs> All right, let's try that and then bring that down and bring these up. Yeah, okay. We're getting there. I'm always relaxed and assured in everything that I do. All right, we're moving places, y'all. We are moving places. Alright. Alright, y'all. The level is complete, and I think so will soon be my stream. Um Thanks everybody for hanging out tonight. It's I know this is a bit of a weird stream and I'm just kinda trying starting to get back in the swing of things. Uh I will I will be picking Pokemon Sword back up next week. I'm very excited for this. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm gonna have to try to tune in tomorrow. Hopefully it's not too late. What time do you go live uh, your local time? I don't remember. I know you told me, or at least you posted on Facebook, but I don't remember because um, I am dumb. <laughs> but at the very least, I'm gonna add you to my hosting list because I think it's worth it to try to get some damn geology out there. Um, let me see. Is anybody live? Is anybody live? I don't know. Um, nope, nobody is live. Okay. Well, I guess space at 3.30 Pacific, but no worries. Come anytime. All right. That's actually three, I think, four, five, six. It's like seven o'clock my time. So that's actually works pretty good. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening. Take care, be well, and I'll see y'all on Tuesday for some more Pokemon.